Angela Yvonne Davis born January 26, 1944, is an American political activist, academic, and author. She emerged as a prominent counterculture activist in the 1960s working with the Communist Party USA, of which she was a member until 1991, and was briefly involved in the Black Panther Party during the Civil Rights Movement, after allegedly purchasing firearms used in the 1970 armed takeover of a Marin County, California courtroom, in which four people were killed, she was prosecuted for conspiracy. She was later acquitted of this charge. Davis is a professor emerita at the University of California, Santa Cruz, in its History of Consciousness Department. She is also a former director of the university's Feminist Studies Department. Her research interests are feminism, African American studies, critical theory, Marxism, popular music, social consciousness, and the philosophy and history of punishment and prisons. She co-founded Critical Resistance, an organization working to abolish the prison industrial complex. Davis's membership in the Communist Party USA CPUSA led California Governor Ronald Reagan in 1969 to attempt to have her barred from teaching at any California university. She supported the governments of the Soviet bloc for several decades. During the 1980s, she was twice a candidate for vice president on the CPUSA ticket. She left the party in 1991. Early life Angela Davis was born in Birmingham, Alabama. Her family lived in the Dynamite Hill neighborhood, which was marked in the 1950s by the bombings of houses in an attempt to intimidate and drive out middle-class blacks who had moved there. Davis occasionally spent time on her uncle's farm and with friends in New York City. She had two brothers, Ben and Reginald, and a sister, Fania. Ben played defensive back for the Cleveland Browns and Detroit Lions in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Davis attended Carrie A. Tuggle School, a segregated black elementary school, and later, Parker Annex, a middle school branch of Parker High School in Birmingham. During this time, Davis's mother, Sally Bell Davis, was a national officer and leading organizer of the Southern Negro Youth Congress, an organization influenced by the Communist Party aimed at building alliances among African Americans in the South. Davis grew up surrounded by communist organizers and thinkers, who significantly influenced her intellectual development. Davis was involved in her church youth group as a child, and attended Sunday school regularly. She attributes much of her political involvement to her involvement with the Girl Scouts of the United States of America. She also participated in the Girl Scouts 1959 National Roundup in Colorado. As a Girl Scout, she marched and picketed to protest racial segregation in Birmingham. By her junior year of high school, Davis had been accepted by an American Friends Service Committee Quaker program that placed black students from the South in integrated schools in the North. She chose Elizabeth Irwin High School in Greenwich Village. There she was recruited by a communist youth group, Advance. Education Brandeis University Davis was awarded a scholarship to Brandeis University in Waltham, Massachusetts, where she was one of three black students in her class. She encountered the Frankfurt School philosopher Herbert Marcuse at a rally during the Cuban Missile Crisis and became his student. In a 2007 television interview, Davis said, Herbert Marcuse taught me that it was possible to be an academic, an activist, a scholar, and a revolutionary. She worked part-time to earn enough money to travel to France and Switzerland and attended the 8th World Festival of Youth and Students in Helsinki. She returned home in 1963 to a Federal Bureau of Investigation interview about her attendance at the communist-sponsored festival. During her second year at Brandeis, Davis decided to major in French and continued her intensive study of philosopher and writer Jean-Paul Sartre. She was accepted by the Hamilton College Junior Year in France program. Classes were initially at Biarritz and later at the Sorbonne. In Paris, she and other students lived with a French family. She was in Biarritz when she learned of the 1963 Birmingham church bombing, committed by members of the Ku Klux Klan, in which four black girls were killed. She grieved deeply as she was personally acquainted with the victims. Nearing completion of her degree in French, Davis realized her major interest was philosophy. 
She was particularly interested in Marcuse's ideas. On returning to Brandeis, she sat in on his course. Marcuse, she wrote in her autobiography, was approachable and helpful. She began making plans to attend the University of Frankfurt for graduate work in philosophy. In 1965, she graduated magna cum laude, a member of Phi Beta Kappa. Topic: <laughs> University of Frankfurt. In Germany, with a monthly stipend of $100, she lived first with a German family and later with a group of students in a loft in an old factory. After visiting East Berlin during the annual May Day celebration, she felt that the East German government was dealing better with the residual effects of fascism than were the West Germans. Many of her roommates were active in the Radical Socialist German Student Union and Davis participated in some SDS actions. Events in the United States, including the formation of the Black Panther Party and the transformation of Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee SNCC to an all-black organization, drew her interest upon her return. <laughs> Postgraduate work Marcuse had moved to a position at the University of California, San Diego, and Davis followed him there after her two years in Frankfurt. On her way back, she stopped in London to attend a conference on the Dialectics of Liberation. The black contingent at the conference included the Trinidadian American Stokely Carmichael and the British Michael X. Although moved by Carmichael's rhetoric, Davis was reportedly disappointed by her colleagues' black nationalist sentiments and their rejection of communism as a white man's thing. She joined the Che Lumumba Club, an all-black branch of the Communist Party USA named for international communist sympathizers and leaders Che Guevara and Patrice Lumumba, of Cuba and the Congo, respectively. Davis earned a master's degree from the University of California, San Diego in 1968. She earned a doctorate in philosophy from Humboldt University in East Berlin. Professor at University of California, Los Angeles, 1969–70 Beginning in 1969, Davis was an acting assistant professor in the philosophy department at the University of California, Los Angeles UCLA. Although both Princeton and Swarthmore had tried to recruit her, she opted for UCLA because of its urban location. At that time, she was known as a radical feminist and activist, a member of the Communist Party USA, and an associate of the Black Panther Party. The Board of Regents of the University of California, urged by then California Governor Ronald Reagan, fired her from her $10,000 a year post in 1969 because of her membership in the Communist Party. The Board of Regents was censured by the American Association of University Professors for its failure to reappoint Davis after her teaching contract expired. On October 20, when Judge Jerry Pact ruled the Regents could not fire Davis solely because of her affiliation with the Communist Party, Davis resumed her post. The Regents released Davis again, on June 20, 1970, for the inflammatory language she had used in four different speeches. The report stated, we deem particularly offensive such utterances as her statement that the regents killed, brutalized and murdered the People's Park demonstrators, and her repeated characterizations of the police as pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest and trial Davis was a supporter of the Soledad brothers, three inmates accused of killing a prison guard at Soledad Prison. On August 7, 1970, Jonathan Jackson, a heavily armed 17 year old African American high school student, gained control over a courtroom in Marin County, California. He armed the black defendants and took Judge Harold Haley, the prosecutor, and three female jurors as hostages. As Jackson transported the hostages and two black convicts away from the courtroom, the police began shooting at the vehicle. The judge and the three black men were killed in the melee, one of the jurors and the prosecutor were injured. Although the judge was shot in the head with a blast from a shotgun, he also suffered a chest wound from a bullet that may have been fired from outside the van. Evidence during the trial showed that either could have been fatal. Davis had purchased several of the firearms Jackson used in the attack, including the shotgun used to shoot Haley, which she bought at a San Francisco pawn shop two days before the incident. 
She was also found to have been corresponding with one of the inmates involved, as California considers all persons concerned in the commission of a crime, whether they directly commit the act constituting the offense principles in any crime so committed." Marin County Superior Judge Peter Allen Smith charged Davis with "...aggravated kidnapping and first-degree murder in the death of Judge Harold Haley," and issued a warrant for her arrest. Hours after the judge issued the warrant on August 14, 1970, a massive attempt to find and arrest Davis began. On August 18, four days after the warrant was issued, the FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover listed Davis on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitive list. She was the third woman and the 309th person to be listed. Soon after, Davis became a fugitive and fled California. According to her autobiography, during this time she hid in friends' homes and moved at night. On October 13, 1970, FBI agents found her at a Howard Johnson Motor Lodge in New York City. President Richard M. Nixon congratulated the FBI on its capture of the dangerous terrorist Angela Davis. On January 5, 1971, Davis appeared at Marin County Superior Court and declared her innocence before the court and nation. I now declare publicly before the court, before the people of this country that I am innocent of all charges which have been leveled against me by the state of California." John Apt, General Counsel of the Communist Party USA, was one of the first attorneys to represent Davis for her alleged involvement in the shootings. While being held in the Women's Detention Center, Davis was initially segregated from other prisoners, in solitary confinement. With the help of her legal team, she obtained a federal court order to get out of the segregated area. Across the nation, thousands of people began organizing a movement to gain her release. In New York City, black writers formed a committee called the Black People in Defense of Angela Davis. By February 1971, more than 200 local committees in the United States, and 67 in foreign countries, worked to free Davis from prison. John Lennon and Yoko Ono contributed to this campaign with the song, Angela. In 1972, after a 16-month incarceration, the state allowed her release on bail from county jail. On February 23, 1972, Roger McAfee, a dairy farmer from Fresno, California, paid her $100,000 bail with the help of Steve Spiricino, a wealthy business owner. The United Presbyterian Church paid some of her legal defense expenses, a defense motion for a change of venue was granted, and the trial was moved to Santa Clara County. On June 4, 1972, after 13 hours of deliberations, the all-white jury returned a verdict of not guilty. The fact that she owned the guns used in the crime was judged insufficient to establish her role in the plot. She was represented by Leo Branton Jr., who hired psychologists to help the defense determine who in the jury pool might favor their arguments, a technique that has since become more common. He hired experts to discredit the reliability of eyewitness accounts. Topic. Representation in other media The first song released in favor of Davis was, Angela, 1971, written by Italian singer-songwriter and musician Virgilio Savona with his group, Quartetto Cetra. He received some anonymous threats. The Rolling Stones song, Sweet Black Angel. Recorded in 1970 and released on their album Exile on Main Street 1972, is dedicated to Davis. It is one of the band's few overtly political releases. Bob Dylan's song, George Jackson, 1971, is concerned with the events of the case. John Lennon and Yoko Ono recorded their song, Angela, on their album Some Time in New York City 1972, in support, and a small photo of her appears on the album's cover at the bottom left. The jazz musician Todd Cochran, also known as Bait, recorded his song, Free Angela Thoughts. And All I've Got to Say, that same year. Tribe Records co-founder Phil Ranelin released a song dedicated to Davis, titled, Angela's Dilemma. On Message from the Tribe, 1972, a spiritual jazz collectible. Topic: References in other venues. On January 28, 1972, Garrett Brock Trapnell hijacked TWA Flight 2. One of his demands was Davis's release.
Other activities in the 1970s Cuba After her acquittal, Davis went on an international speaking tour in 1972 and included Cuba, where she had previously been received by Fidel Castro in 1969 as a member of a Communist Party delegation. Robert F. Williams, Huey Newton, Stokely Carmichael had also visited there, and Asada Shakur lives there after escaping from U.S. prison. Her reception by Afro-Cubans at a mass rally was so enthusiastic that she was reportedly barely able to speak. Davis perceived Cuba to be a racism-free country, which led her to believe that, "...only under socialism could the fight against racism be successfully executed." When she returned to the United States, her socialist leanings increasingly influenced her understanding of race struggles. In 1974, she attended the Second Congress of the Federation of Cuban Women. Soviet Union In 1971 the CIA estimated that 5% of Soviet propaganda efforts were directed towards the Angela Davis campaign. In August 1972, Davis visited the USSR at the invitation of the Central Committee, and received an honorary doctorate from Moscow State University. On May 1, 1979, she was awarded the Lenin Peace Prize from the Soviet Union. She visited Moscow later that month to accept the prize, where she praised the glorious name of Lenin and the Great October Revolution. East Germany The East German government organized an extensive campaign on behalf of Davis. In September 1972, Davis visited East Germany, where she met Erich Honecker, received an honorary degree from the University of Leipzig and the Star of People's Friendship from Walter Ulbricht. On September 11 in East Berlin she delivered a speech, "...not only my victory," praising the GDR and USSR and denouncing American racism, and visited the Berlin Wall. In 1973 she returned to East Berlin leading the U.S. delegation to the Tenth World Festival of Youth and Students. <laughs> Jonestown and People's Temple In the mid-1970s, Jim Jones, who developed the cult People's Temple, initiated friendships with progressive leaders in the San Francisco area including Dennis Banks of the American Indian movement Eamon Davis. On September 10, 1977, 14 months before the temple's mass murder-suicide, Davis spoke via amateur radio telephone, Patch, to members of his People's Temple living in Jonestown in Guyana. In her statement during the Six-Day Siege, she expressed support for the People's Temple anti-racism efforts and told members there was a conspiracy against them. She said, when you are attacked, it is because of your progressive stand, and we feel that it is directly an attack against us as well. <laughs> Alexander Solzhenitsyn, Czechoslovakia In a New York City speech on July 9, 1975, Russian dissident and Nobel laureate Alexander Solzhenitsyn told an AFL-CIO meeting that Davis was derelict in having failed to support prisoners in various socialist countries around the world, given her strong opposition to the U.S. prison system. He claimed a group of Czech prisoners had appealed to Davis for support, which Solzhenitsyn said she had declined. In fact, Yuri Pelikan wrote an open letter asking her to support Czech prisoners, which Davis refused, believing that the Czech prisoners were undermining the Husak government and that Pelikan, in exile in Italy, was attacking his own country. <laughs> Later academic career Davis was a professor of ethnic studies at the San Francisco State University from at least 1980 to 1984. She was a professor in the History of Consciousness and the Feminist Studies Departments at the University of California, Santa Cruz and Rutgers University from 1991 to 2008. Since then, she has been Distinguished Professor Emerita. Davis was a Distinguished Visiting Professor at Syracuse University in Spring 1992 and October 2010. In 2014, Davis returned to UCLA as a Regents Lecturer. 
She delivered a public lecture on May 8 in Royce Hall, where she had given her first lecture 45 years earlier. On May 22, 2016, Davis was awarded an Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters in Healing and Social Justice from the California Institute of Integral Studies in San Francisco during its 48th annual commencement ceremony. Political activism and speeches Davis left the Communist Party in 1991, founding the Committees of Correspondence for Democracy and Socialism. Her group broke from the Communist Party USA because of the latter's support of the Soviet coup attempt of 1991 following the fall of the Soviet Union and tearing down of the Berlin Wall. She continues to serve on the advisory board of the committees. In 2014, she said she continues to have a relationship with the CPUSA but has not rejoined. Davis has written several books. A principal focus of her current activism is the state of prisons in the United States. She considers herself an abolitionist, not a prison reformer. She has referred to the United States prison system as the prison industrial complex, aggravated by the establishment of privately owned and run prisons. Davis advocates focusing social efforts on education and building engaged communities to solve various social problems now handled through state punishment. Davis was one of the founders of Critical Resistance, a national grassroots organization dedicated to building a movement to abolish the prison industrial complex. In recent works, she has argued that the U.S. prison system more closely resembles a new form of slavery than a criminal justice system. According to Davis, between the late 19th century and the mid-20th century, the number of prisons in the United States sharply increased but crime rates continued to fall. She argues that racism in American society during this time was demonstrated by the disproportionate share of the African American population who were incarcerated. What is effective or just about this justice system? She urged people to ask. Davis has lectured at Rutgers University, San Francisco State University, Stanford University, Smith College, Bryn Mawr College, Brown University, Syracuse University, and other schools. As most of her teaching is at the graduate level, she says that she concentrates more on posing questions that encourage development of critical thinking than on imparting knowledge. In 1997, she identified as a lesbian in Out magazine. As early as 1969, Davis began public speaking engagements. She expressed her opposition to the Vietnam War, racism, sexism, and the prison industrial complex, and her support of gay rights and other social justice movements. In 1969, she blamed imperialism for the troubles oppressed populations suffer. We are facing a common enemy and that enemy is Yankee imperialism, which is killing us both here and abroad. Now I think anyone who would try to separate those struggles, anyone who would say that in order to consolidate an anti-war movement, we have to leave all of these other outlying issues out of the picture, is playing right into the hands of the enemy, she declared. In 2001 she publicly spoke against the war on terror following the 9-11 attacks, continued to criticize the prison industrial complex, and discussed the broken immigration system. She said that to solve social justice issues, people must hone their critical skills, develop them and implement them. Later, in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina in 2005, she declared that the horrendous situation in New Orleans was due to the country's structural racism, capitalism, and imperialism. Davis opposed the 1995 Million Man March, arguing that the exclusion of women from this event promoted male chauvinism. She said that Louis Farrakhan and other organizers appeared to prefer that women take subordinate roles in society. Together with Kimberlé Crenshaw and others, she formed the African American Agenda 2000, an alliance of black feminists. Davis has continued to oppose the death penalty. In 2003, she lectured at Agnes Scott College, a liberal arts women's college in Atlanta, Georgia, on prison reform, minority issues, and the ills of the criminal justice system. At the University of California, Santa Cruz, Davis participated in a 2004 panel concerning Kevin Cooper. She also spoke in defense of Stanley Tukey Williams on panels in 2005 and 2009. In 2008, Davis was a keynote speaker at Vanderbilt University's conference. Who Speaks for the Negro? 
She has visited Vanderbilt twice since then, most recently to give the commemorative Murray Lecture on February 25, 2015, on college activism. On April 16, 2009, she was the keynote speaker at the University of Virginia Carter G. Woodson Institute for African American and African Studies Symposium on the Problem of Punishment, Race, Inequity, and Justice. On October 31, 2011, Davis spoke at the Philadelphia and Washington Square Occupy Wall Street Assemblies. Due to restrictions on electronic amplification, her words were human microphone. In 2012 Davis was awarded the 2011 Blue Planet Award, an award given for contributions to humanity and the planet. At the 27th Empowering Women of Color Conference in 2012, Davis said she was a vegan. She has called for the release of Razmia Oda, associate director at the Arab American Action Network, who was convicted of immigration fraud. On January 23, 2012, Davis was the Rhode Island School of Design's MLK Celebration Series keynote speaker and 2012 honoree. Davis supports the boycott, divestment, and sanctions campaign against Israel. Davis was an honorary co chair of the January 21, 2017 Women's March on Washington, which occurred the day after President Trump's inauguration. The organizer's decision to make her a featured speaker was criticized from the right by Humberto Fontova and National Review. Libertarian journalist Kathy Young wrote that Davis's long record of support for political violence in the United States and the worst of human rights abusers abroad undermined the march. Topic: <laughs> Representation in other media. In Renato Guttuso's painting The Funerals of Togliatti Davis is depicted, among other figures of communism, in the left framework, near the author's self-portrait, Elio Vitturini, and Jean-Paul Sartre. In the movie Network 1976, Marlene Warfield's character Laureen Hobbs appears to be modeled on Davis. In 2018, the British jazz group Sons of Kemet released a song from their album Your Queen is a Reptile called, My Queen is Angela Davis. Bibliography Topic Books If They Come in the Morning, Voices of Resistance New York, 3rd Press, 1971, ISBN 0-893-88022-1. Angela Davis, An Autobiography, Random House September 1974, ISBN 0-394-48978-0. Joan Little, The Dialectics of Rape New York, Lang Communications, 1975 Women, Race, and Class February 12, 1983, ISBN 0-394-71351-6 Women, Culture and Politics, Vintage February 19, 1990, ISBN 0-679-72487-7 The Angela Y. Davis Reader ed. Joy James, Wiley Blackwell December 11, 1998, ISBN 0-631-20361-3. Blues Legacies and Black Feminism, Gertrude Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith, and Billie Holiday, Vintage Books January 26, 1999, ISBN 0-679-77126-3. Are Prisons Obsolete? Seven Stories Press April 2003, ISBN 1-58322-581-1. Abolition Democracy, Beyond Prisons, Torture, and Empire, Seven Stories Press October 1, 2005, ISBN 1-58322-695-8. The Meaning of Freedom, and Other Difficult Dialogues City Lights, 2012, ISBN 978-0872865808. Freedom is a Constant Struggle, Ferguson, Palestine, and the Foundations of a Movement, Haymarket Books 2015, ISBN 978-1-60846-564-4. Herbert Marcuse, Philosopher of Utopia, A Graphic Biography Forward, City Lights, 2019, ISBN 9780872867857 Interviews and appearances 1971 An interview with Angela Davis Cassette. Radio Free People, New York, 1971. Meyerson, M. Angela Davis in Prison. 
Ramparts Magazine, March 1971, 20-21. Sagner, Art. Angela Davis, Soul and Soledad. Phonodisc. Flying Dutchman, New York, 1971. Walker, Joe. Angela Davis Speaks. Phonodisc. Folkways Records, New York, 1971. 1972-1985. Angela Davis Talks About Her Future and Her Freedom. Jet, July 27, 1972, 54-57. Davis, Angela Why I Am a Black Revolutionary Woman, 1971. Phonodisc. Folkways, New York, 1977. Phillips, Esther. Angela Davis Interviews Esther Phillips. Cassette. Pacifica Tape Library, Los Angeles, 1977. Cujo, Selwyn. In Conversation with Angela Davis. Videocassette. ETV Center, Cornell University, Ithaca, 1985. 21-minute interview. 1992-1997. Davis, Angela Y. Women on the Move, Travel Themes in Ma Rainey's Blues. In Borders, Diasporas. Sound Recording. University of California, Santa Cruz, Center for Cultural Studies, Santa Cruz, 1992. Davis, Angela Y. Black is. Black Ain't. Documentary Film. Independent Television Service, ITVS, 1994. Interview Angela Davis Public Broadcasting Service, Spring 1997 2000 to 2002 Davis, Angela Y. The Prison Industrial Complex and Its Impact on Communities of Color. Videocassette. University of Wisconsin, Madison, Madison, Wisconsin, 2000. Barsamian, D. Angela Davis, African American Activist on Prison Industrial Complex. Progressive 65.2 2001, 33-38. September 11th America, an interview with Angela Davis. Policing the National Body, Sex, Race, and Criminalization. Cambridge, Massachusetts, South End Press, 2002. 2011-2016. The Black Power Mixtape 1967-1975, documentary film prominently featuring Davis in a number of rarely seen Swedish interviews, released 2011. Activist Professor Angela Davis. Episode of Woman's Hour, BBC Radio 4, December 3, 2014. Criminal Queers, a fictional DIY film examining the relationship between the LGBT community and the criminal justice system, released 2015. Thirteenth, documentary file about the Thirteenth Amendment and history of the civil rights movement, released 2016. Topic: Archives. The National United Committee to Free Angela Davis is at the main library at Stanford University, Palo Alto, California, a collection of thousands of letters received by the committee and Davis from people in the U.S. and other countries. The complete transcript of her trial, including all appeals and legal memoranda, has been preserved in the Meikle John Civil Liberties Library in Berkeley, California. Davis's papers are archived at the Schlesinger Library at the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study in Cambridge, Massachusetts. See also Africana philosophy Black feminism, Efter Bidet, Stockholm, Marxist feminism.